Hello students before moving on into the session for today i would like to bring your attention to the matter of the time which is the draft eia 2020 which is affecting our environment as such and let's share some information about the same before moving on into our session for today the eia or environmental impact assessment is a significant tool used by the moe fcc to minimize the adverse impact of industries to the environment and it lays down clearance processes a project should go through before it is given the green light so it obviously involves a thorough screening process by researchers and experts so it is an extremely important concept or factor which is required to minimize environmental impacts of industries especially like risking of oil spills gas leaks and other emissions of toxins into the environment so what is the problem with the new draft 2020 of eia in the new draft many amends amendments are given easiness for industries to set up projects and this could negatively impact the environment the draft eia 2020 dilutes public consultations which is a requirement for a project to be given green light and this draft reduces the time period for local people to submit their objections and this makes very vulnerable communities of such industries the impact of such industries like the tribal people villagers and people who are living by the sea sites and they will be completely excluded from the decision making process process of these projects and they are the most affected by these projects eia 2016 allow only six major project types to be spared from such clearances but the new draft 2020 is adding around 20 uh, around 40 new items to the list so that makes up about 20 industries which can be set up without having environmental clearances and the projects including construction of waste treatment facilities and expansion of national highways would be free from holding public hearings so this is an important information regarding draft eia 2020 and as a citizen of india what can you do this draft was released in march 2020 this year and several protests and petitions were filed against this new draft and the last date for public comments is being postponed from august 10 to june 30 but the delhi high court made it an extension and the deadline for public feedback and ar arousing of concerns against this draft eia notification 2020 is today which is august 11 2020 what can you do you can sign petitions opposing this draft you can write an email to the environmental minister and several pre-written emails are being circulated in the social medias you can just make some changes in those emails in the templates and send the emails to the environment minister and you can read and share news about the same so that others come to know about such an important notification which is going to of of course cause destruction to the environment and we are definitely going to be affected so please take this into your concern and do your part 
by signing petitions and sending your concerns as emails to the ministries of the environment of India. All the required help will be given in the description of this video so that you can do your part. So thank you for listening to this facts about EIA 2020 draft. So now let's move on into our session. And today we are going to prove the theorem 2.29, which says that if u and v be real value functions defined on a region G, and suppose if u and v are having continuous partial derivatives, then the function which is defined from G to C, which is f of z is equal to u of z plus i, v of z is analytic, if and only if u and v satisfy the cauchy riemann equations. So we are going to give the proof of this. So in order to prove, we are given u and v to be functions in a region G of the complex plane. And we are assuming that u and v are having continuous partial derivatives. And of course, in the hypothesis, it's given that we define the function to be f of z is equal to u of z plus i v of z for every z belongs to g. And z can be written as x plus i y coming from g. So that will definitely make u and v to be functions of the two variables x and y. And if we are defining f as such, we had proved in the earlier session that the partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to y and the partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to the equal to minus of the partial derivative of v with respect to x that is ux is equal to v, vy uy is equal to minus vx which is the cauchy riemann equations we had proved it before so the first part of the theorem is already being proved by us so let's prove the converse part. Let u and v be real value functions in G with continuous partial derivatives such that they are satisfying the Cauchy Riemann equations on G. Okay. So suppose we are taking a z which is equal to x plus iy belongs to G. Okay. See, suppose uh, this G or uh, region G, open connected set G is sitting here. Okay, inside the complex plane and we are choosing a z here okay this is the set that is equal to x plus i y say so as g is an open set in the complex plane we can find an open ball centered at z with some radius small r strictly greater than zero such that the open ball is completely sitting inside this g so this is our open ball see it is centered at z and having the radius r v z of r now consider open ball centered at 0 with the same radius r which we talked about now. Okay, That is b0 of r. Okay, This is b0 of r. And suppose we are choosing a point h which is equal to s plus i t inside this b0 of r. Fine. We can choose any h inside b0 r. Now consider the function f of z plus h minus f of z and find the real part of this function of the same okay so that is the real part of i am instead of z i can replace it with x plus i y instead of h i am replacing it with s plus i t okay i'm going to take x plus s together in the next equation plus i into y plus t okay fine and i am going to write this f as a real part plus i into the imaginary part in both cases. So I am having f of x plus s plus i into y plus t is equal to u of x plus s comma y plus t plus i into v of x plus s comma y plus t minus u of x comma y minus i into v of x comma y. Okay. 
and I have to find the real part of the whole of this term. So the real part is nothing but u of x plus s comma y plus t minus u of x comma y, right? And what I'm going to do is just add and subtract u of x comma y plus t because we require it as we move on, okay? So just add the same term and subtract the same term. And I'm going to take this as the first bracketed term and this as the second bracketed term because we require it. So, okay. Now let's just uh, have a quick recap of the mean value theorem in a uh, real analysis. Suppose if G is a uh, function, okay, uh, such that there is a small change here. I chose it to be G, so we have it as G dash C, G of P minus G of P. Okay, so if I am having G to be a continuous function on the closed interval AB and this G is differentiable in open interval AB, then there exists a unique point inside this open interval AB such that g of b minus g of a divided by b minus a is equal to g dash of c. This is what mean value theorem says. Okay. So, we had two bracketed terms here, sitting here. Okay. You consider the first bracketed term. Okay. And you can see that the first variable for u here is x plus s. Here it is x. The second variable is y plus t. Here it is also y plus t. So we are assuming that this function u is just depending only on x. Okay, we are just uh, forgetting this y plus t part. Okay, that it be like that. But we are saying that this u is only depending on the variable x. Okay. So now this u is going to be applied with the mean value theorem which we talked about earlier. Okay. We know that u is a continuous function because it is, we assume that it has uh, continuous partial derivatives, right? So, which satisfies Cauchy-Riemann equation in the hypothesis. So, this u is a continuous function and it is continuous on closed interval x comma x plus s and it is differentiable on open interval x comma x plus s. We are just replacing a with x and b with x plus s, okay? And then by mean value theorem, we says that there exists a unique point inside this open interval. So here we are saying that there exists a point x plus s1, which belongs to x open interval x comma x plus s. And note that this was h, this is an enlarged magnified version of our b0 of r, okay, fine. And this was our H and it was called S plus IT. So this will be S and this will be T. Okay. And since uh, this is happening, U is a continuous on X comma X plus S. And uh, we are taking X plus S1 inside X comma X plus S. Definitely this S1 will be having distance less than uh, the distance of S from the origin that is modulus of s1 will be uh, less than strictly less than modulus of s for sure okay so there exists a point x plus s1 belongs to the open interval x comma x plus s such that the derivative of u with respect to x and the point is x plus s1 right instead of c i am having x plus s1 here comma y plus t there is no change for y plus t that is equal to u of x plus s, which is b earlier, right, minus, uh, y, uh, comma y plus t, no change, minus u of x, comma y plus t divided by x plus s minus x, okay. So, this is the mean value theorem applied on u when treated it as a function of x alone. Similarly, I am going to use the mean value theorem on the second bracketed term, second bracketed term here, the term here and we are saying that here we know that x the variable x is the same for the two u's here so we are thinking that the function is only depending on y here 
and we are applying the mean value theorem again here and we get that u is a continuous function on closed interval y comma y plus t and it is differentiable in open interval y comma y plus t so there exists a point y plus t1 which belongs to open interval y comma y plus t such that the derivative of u with respect to y of x comma y plus t1 this is the c in the mean value here that is equal to u of x comma y plus t minus u of x y divided by y plus t minus y and of course here u suffix x means dou u by dou x u suffix y means dou u by dou y for our convenience we are notating like that and here also like earlier modulus of t1 will be strictly less than modulus of t and you can understand that from the figure here this will be t so modulus of t1 will be the distance between t1 and 0 modulus of t will be the distance between t and 0 so modulus of t1 will be of course strictly less than modulus of t and to summarize what we got here so we had chosen a h arbitrary from d0 of r which is equal to s plus lt so then we can find numbers s1 and d1 such that their modulus is strictly less than modulus of s and modulus of t simultaneously to get u of just rearranging the equation we got from the mean value theorem just cross multiplying and getting u of x plus s comma y plus t minus u of x comma y plus t is equal to the s was in the denominator earlier we are multiplying it with ux that is equal to s into ux of x plus s1 comma y plus t and from the second you get u of x comma y plus t minus u of xy is equal to t into ui of x comma y plus t1 and you are going to add both of them okay when you are adding you know that this term and this term will cancel out and what you are getting is u of x plus s comma y plus t minus u of xy which is equal to s into ux of x plus s1 comma y plus t plus t into ui of x comma y plus t1. So taking an inspiration from the equation hash we are defining a new function which is uh, phi of phi of st which is equal to u of x plus s comma y plus t minus u of x y minus s into u x of x comma y plus t into u y of x comma y. So we can instead of this first braces I can substitute s into u x of x plus s1 comma y plus t plus t into u y of x comma y plus t1 which is equation hash by substituting hash in this equation I am getting this and uh, I am taking all the s out and joining together the rest of them in braces plus t out and the rest in braces okay and then we are going to divide the defined function with s plus it I am doing the same in the RHS fine and we are going to analyze some things which we get. We know that s will be less than or equal to s square plus t square which clearly implies that modulus of s is less than or equal to modulus of s plus it. That means modulus of s by s plus it is less than or equal to 1. That is s by s plus it is a bounded term. Okay. Also t is less than or equal to root of square root of s square plus t square that is modulus of t is less than or equal to modulus of s plus i t therefore modulus of t by s plus i t is less than or equal to 1 that also necessarily implies that the term t by s plus i t is a bounded term okay now we had assumed in the hypothesis that u and v are having continuous partial derivatives that will mean that the partial derivatives of u with respect to x and y are continuous. Okay, now suppose if s plus it is tending to 0, 
okay the complex number s plus it is tending to zero will necessarily imply the ordered pair s comma t which is nothing but s plus it is tending to the ordered pair zero zero right and s is happening to be here and we earlier noted that modulus of s is modulus of s1 is strictly less than modulus of s right distance between the origin and s1 is strictly less than the distance between the origin and s right so whenever this ordered pair s comma t is tending to 0 0 the ordered pair s1 comma t is also tending to 0 similarly the ordered pair 0 comma t1 will also be tending to 0 0 okay this i require that's why i'm saying about this okay or we can say that whenever the complex number s plus i t is belonging to the uh, open ball centered at 0 with radius r, we know that s1 plus i t as well as 0 plus i t1 also belongs to p0 of r. Fine. So now you are taking the modulus of uh, the earlier uh, equation we got. We are going to take the modulus here. Okay. So when we are taking the modulus, uh, modulus in the LHS will mean the modulus in the RHS. I am going to uh, use the property of triangle inequality as well as the property of modulus to get this, the second inequality, right? And uh, we know that uh, this modulus of S by S plus I T is less than or equal to 1 and modulus of T by S plus I T is less than or equal to 1. So that will imply the third inequality, right? And we know that as s plus i t is tending to 0, we know that s1 plus i t is also tending to 0. And we know that u x dou by dou x of u is continuous. Okay, then, then that will mean that u x of x plus s1 comma y plus t will necessar necessarily tend to u x of x y, x comma y as s plus i t is tending to 0 which implies s1 plus i t is tending to 0. Here also as s plus i t is tending to 0 we earlier said that 0 plus i t1 is tending to 0. So here also we will know that this modulus sign is tending to 0 as well as this modulus uh, term is tending to 0 that will mean that the whole part is tending to 0 okay as s plus i t is tending to 0 which will mean that modulus of this term is tending to 0 that will mean that whatever that is sitting inside is tending to 0. So what you got is now is that limit s plus i t tends to 0 of phi of s comma t divided by s plus i t is equal to 0. Okay. So what did we obtain now? We obtained that from the definition of phi of s t how we defined it. Okay. Uh, we are just rearranging and we obtain u of x plus s comma y plus t minus u of x comma y is equal to s into u x of x comma y plus t into u y of x comma y plus phi of s t where phi of s t s comma t is satisfying the equality here that is limit s plus i t tends to 0 phi of s t divided by s plus i t is equal to 0 which we found out okay similarly we did all these things with respect to u uh, the same Developments can be worked out with respect to V when we are taking instead of the real part in the first when we first consider the real part of f of z plus h minus f of z take the imaginary part then you will obtain the same uh, situation for V okay. So, instead of u, you can replace it with v everywhere and instead of phi, I am going to replace it with psi, okay. So, that is what we obtained here and now we are going to think about the function, the function f of z plus h, this is h, h is equal to s plus i t minus f of z divided by h, okay. Instead of h, I am replacing it with s plus i t and instead of z, replace it it with x plus i y make the real parts together see the imaginary parts together and make it to write as a real part plus i into imaginary part in everywhere okay then bring together the u's together plus i into the v's together okay 
and uh, instead of this the term the first braces you can use what we obtained here okay and uh, instead of the sec the second one the second one here we can use the rhs of this equation here okay we are substituting everything and using cauchy riemann equation we earlier said that u uh, u and v are satisfying cauchy riemann equation that will mean that uy is equal to minus vx we are substituting it here and vy is equal to ux substituting here okay and then again we are rearranging to get take the ux of x comma y together and you can take x plus it together in the braces similarly uh, instead of minus 1 i can replace it with i square because i square is equal to minus 1 okay and then take the vx of x plus x comma y together and in the braces you will get s plus it into i into vx of x comma y these are all very simple calculations plus the rest of the v of st plus i into v of st divided by s plus i okay just uh, think about calculations uh, very easy but okay you can cancel out s plus i t here okay and what we are left with is this f of z plus s plus i t minus f of z divided by s plus i t is equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x plus i into partial derivative of v with respect to x plus v plus i into c divided by s plus i t okay now apply the limits s plus i t tending to 0 in both cases applying the properties of limit on the sum of terms uh, apply, uh, apply individual uh, apply the limits on those individual terms and you can take the constants out okay and you know that the first two terms are not depending on s and t so they they are they can be treated as constants so they will be definitely ux of x comma y plus i into vx of x comma y and we earlier proved that uh, this term the third term and the fourth term sitting here will go to zero as s plus it is tending to zero so what we obtained finally is in the lhs when we observe we know that this is nothing but the derivative of f with the uh, derivative of total derivative of f f dash of z that is equal to ux of x comma y plus i into vx of x comma y and here since so what we now obtained is a derivative of f right uh, and uh, the next thing we have to understand is that the derivative should be continuous for the function to be analytic but we have assumed that ux and vx are continuous so uh, here we are getting it as uh, vx right so please make a change here so that will be v x okay since ux and vx are continuous the derivative f dash will also be continuous so f b continuously differentiable we can say that our function is analytic and that will end up proof so this is our uh, session for today thank you for uh, watching out the session and also please uh, remember what we talked in the first part about the draft eia 2020 you all can make a voice by signing petitions and uh, mailing the Uh, concerns to the ministries of the environment of india and uh, all the helpful links will be given in the description of the video thank you so much